that brings me to um, the next speaker. Uh, this is an amazing guy. Uh, I met him uh, through, uh, through an interjection of uh, a good friend of mine. And um, he said, Byron, what you're doing is crazy, but that's why I love it. And he's been a very good supporter. He's been uh, kind of a mentor even uh, for, for us in this event. Um, let me introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Salens. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? I just need to read some notes. First of all, uh, Gunther Pauli, great stuff. Alec van Noten, he's somewhere here, our new business guy, because I saw his iPhone. He definitely needs branding because it's an amazing story, but I didn't know him, so make sure we pitch him for business. Then secondly, if I understood well, this uh, topless shooting is at 12.30. That's good because my plane is later. Then first of all, I want to thank Byron. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Musk, for being with us. No, that's a joke. Okay, guys. All right. Uh, I, added this, uh, I added this picture when I was uh, Monday morning. I had a meeting at uh, Ferrari, which is a client. And as every morning I go running, so I go running at 6.30 in the morning in Maranello, and I see this Tesla. And you can still see them a little bit. There are just some uh, guys uh, that were standing all around uh, Ferrari workers. And I asked them, I said, guys, why are you looking at? They said, yeah, Bell Martina, beautiful car made from a white uh, piece of paper. So I find it quite interesting that in front of the Ferrari headquarters, I met this uh, Tesla. Okay, um, living in a world uh, without marketing. You're going to talk about that. Does anybody know which city this is? New York, yeah. Where in New York? Times Square. Looks a little bit uh, strange like this. Eh? If you take all the advertising away, now, my name is Eric Salens. This is who I am. This is where I've been uh, hanging around uh, the, last, uh, the last couple of months. I love boxing. These are my daughters. If you make pictures, send them to me because I'm traveling a lot. I promised them to send a lot of pictures from their old man. Now, here we go. Today, we are going to talk about uh, five parts. First of all, living in a world without marketing. Secondly, the importance of marketing CMOs meeting chief information officers. Then, how do you take it from brand experience to product experience? and then creating a sustainable hype, and we will talk a little bit about game over. First of all, what's a brand? Uh, there are many definitions, as there are marketeers, about branding, but at the end of the day, a brand can be anything. It can be a color, it can be a smell, it can be a shape, it can be a place, it can be a sound. When I do ding, 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 everybody says it's Intel. But a brand, when it can be anything, people think it's a logo. It's much more than that. A brand, it's what we call, it's a belief system. A brand, these are stories in your mind. When you say to somebody, Tesla, it triggers in your brain experiences, things you saw, associations. When I say to you, Lada or Tesla, you see the difference. When I say to you, Ferrari and Tesla, you feel the difference. I even don't have to explain it to you. Now, the most important things of branding is that it's all stories. They are stories that people share. Do you know how many times people share a good experience? How many times do you share a good experience? How many times? 10 times? A really positive guy, no. Three times. How many times do you share a bad experience? More or less, who says more? Who says less? You're a really strange dude. Is it? No, it's called ripple effect, nine times more. The last time we were able to calculate this was before social media. Today we cannot control that anymore. So it's important that when you build a brand, you have these stories that people share. Now, the importance to understand is that the brand, it's a belief system where the people involved, involved, they reward you with your loyalty and they spread towards the other. When you look at this event, when Byron came to me with this idea, he said, man, you fucking lost your mind. This is Belgium, you know? I never speak here, uh, this is not the place to do it. He says to me, no, Eric, we have to do Tesla World here in Antwerp. I said, man, you lost your mind. And then he kept on pushing, pushing, pushing. I said, okay, we'll do it. Now, first of all, a brand, it creates an emotional bond. When you open this little pack of an Apple, basically, you don't buy an iPhone or a laptop. You buy an experience, you buy fashion, you buy lifestyle. 
it says something about you. It's like Byron driving around this Tesla. It's the same. And everybody thinks that when you build a brand, it costs money, time, and effort. Everybody agrees with that. Who does not agree with that? Who thinks it costs a lot of money? Yeah, you're all wrong. That has changed. Eh? When you look at the example of Ecover, uh, two weeks ago I was in Dubai, and I was uh, visiting one of the universities there, and they were teaching the Ecover case, how unique it was. Do you think that Ecover has ever advertised in the Middle East? I don't think so. But then they were telling this story, which then, of course, has a storytelling effect, a good story. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? Then it, be it basically becomes almost the, Bel the king of Belgium who created Ecover by the time they presented there. So living in a world without marketing, when you look at Tesla, for example, it has not a problem. When I was in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago, I took a picture of this charger, which like was smiling at me, and they have no, they have no marketing. They have no above the line campaigns, they have no dealers, they have no salespeople, they have no test drives, they have no showrooms. Well, they have test drives, but that's uh, the Tesla uh, organized it here. It's about brandship. It's about the brand plus ambassadors, as most of you are. And altogether, you basically go tell this story because the story is in your brain. You tell it to other people. You convince them because people first trust people. Then people, they trust the stories these people tell. And then people, they only trust the brand it's about. It has switched. The system has switched. 20, 30 years ago, it was different. But now, you don't believe brands anymore. You don't believe them. Everybody is basically lying. So brandship replaces your marketing efforts with a much more credible medium. And the strongest brands, the other ones who appeal to the niche and who can create a tipping point. This is the reason when you look, for example, at fashion brands, they target the niche and it's followed by the majority. Why do you think Apple paid a large amount of money to Hermes to add it to their new iWatch? It's all about the same logic that works in lifestyle. That is what they are doing. And the critical factor is innovation. When I was uh, driving uh, this Tesla around, this P85, I think this thing is, yeah, all these buttons, all these little gimmicks, innovation is what pushes. And it's also what I think uh, Jean de Pauli was saying, 365 stories for kids to innovate. But you need these communities, because otherwise innovation does not get picked up. Now, why do you need brand ambassadors? First of all, when you have this brandship, you humanize your product. It certainly becomes a person. And as I said before, people first trust people. Secondly, it creates positive word of mouth. Thirdly, you have a viral brand exposure. It's something you cannot control and you do not want to control. It creates trust and it creates a valuable feedback. It's what you see a lot in the US. You see it in the way you ent the entrepreneurs are going there. You go iter iterative from one to the other. You make mistakes and you pick up again and you fix it. So takeaways for you guys to take back home to your businesses. Brandship supports your brand. Forget about all the rest. The majority follows the niche. So focus on the niche and pull the majority along. To skip marketing, companies should innovate. If you have no innovation, just basically stop because you have no future. You will be out of the market. Now, part two is CMO meets CIO. When you look at technology, it's changing marketing in speed, relevance, and reach. Marketing is not a passive thing anymore. It happens all around you. Do you know how many information pulses you have on a daily basis in the Netherlands? Who says it's above 3,000? Raise your hands. Who says it's below 3,000? You're all wrong. 3,600. And these are only the ones of which you are aware. So basically, we are overloaded with information. My personal belief is that by 2020, more people will die or get sick from information overload than from cancer. Because we can cure cancer, but we have not found a way to fix information overload. So as marketeers, we should not start adding more and more information because it doesn't work. Technology allows product experience. Technology allows to be customer-centric. Technology allows the fact that the marketing guy, basically he does not need to understand technology, he needs to become it. And this is when you look, innovation will drive marketing, and marketing will drive innovation. And we are, and that's why I also found interesting what, what uh, Jean de Pauli was saying, 
when I look, for example, at our Belgian uh, educational system, and I compare it to a teaching I did uh, during summer in the US, we basically educate our, our, our children, our youth, in a very traditional way. We keep on, in my business, creating marketing people. No, we have to start creating hybrid profiles that understand the things we do. It's also strange. Every year they ask me, do you want to come and teach at university? I said, no, only if you pay to the Brandtholm Foundation. Yeah, but the process is that we have to take you on the payroll. I said, man, I don't want to be on the payroll. I'll, I'll come and teach and give the money to the Brandtholm Foundation. That's not possible. It's been going on for six years, still not teaching. Kodak, everybody knows what it means. The essence of survival. You miss the step, you're done. It's finished, you're dead. Nobody talks about you anymore. Although I'm thinking about one day buying that brand and building it up again. Takeaway, technology changes marketing. Whatever business you are in, look at whatever technology surrounds you because it is going to change your business. Secondly, marketing needs to become technology. I'm not telling you you have to go and fire all the marketing departments. I think you can uh, easily take 50% out, but look at who can become technology. Technology creates the experience. It does, it's not created anymore by marketing. Last but not least, innovation crucial to survival. Now, quickly on part three, from band experience to product experience. When you look at any product, basically, this is your functional part, this is your emotional part. Yeah? It's interesting, when you go shopping with your wife, I see it many times, and it's interesting also with your kids. It basically, the emotions, but you are triggered by the experiences. You should not win this one, you should win this one. The moment you touch a product and it creates an experience, it starts building your brand. Yesterday night, because I use Ecovert, I touched the bottle and by touching the bottle, I basically touch the future of the world. I don't touch the soap, I touch the future of the world. It becomes an experience. Now, what do we need now? Do we need now brand or product experience? It's very interesting. Who saw the movie of the guy jumping from Red Bull? Who saw it? Do you know how many people saw it? Who said that it was over 150 million people? Yeah. And that was only at one moment. Altogether, at the same time, 151 p million people were looking. Live, people got up at three o'clock in the morning to look. Can you tell me one other TV station in the world that has, on one single moment, this number of viewers? No, it's about experience. Look at Innocent, all these small little things. Stop looking at my bottom. It gives a result. Little joke. Do you know that the Netherlands Campina in Belgium, they had on the milk packs, hier openen, open here. They had to take it off because all the Belgians were opening it in the shop. And this is not a joke, eh? This really happened a couple of years ago, I remember. Now. Are we now product-driven experience or product adds value to brand? Yeah? When you look at, for example, I said about the, this Tesla, I said, man, it's like, I said to Byron, I said, fucking Tesla, man, it's like driving a Duracell battery. Please, Eric, you don't know what you're talking about. Try the P85, I think it was. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's a total different experience. For me, it was weird because it didn't make any sound. There was no gearing in it. But as Gunther said, the kids growing up with that, for them, it will be normal. It's what they know. And great experience travel fast. I took some of my friends in there. I even gave the car to uh, Alec and uh, some of the guys of the company. And they went bizarre for three days. Now, the sweet spot is where the brand experience touches the product experience and vice versa. And that's the interesting thing about the Tesla car. When you look at it, who has ever pushed this insane button? Who has ever pushed this button? Yeah, come on, we all, everybody speeds in Belgium, you know? Yeah. Just the fact that you can touch this little button, you know? It's got the feeling like these pictures where you want to touch a nipple eh, of the woman. <laughs> That's what everybody wants. One has the, the other nipple, you know, this one. We all wanted to touch it. Eh? Innovation experience need also need to be sustainable. And now comes the following. When you look at technology, it's product experience plus brand experience. Two, experience needs to be shareable and valuable. Three, Sustainability is king. But then continuing on what Gunther was saying, and we didn't know each other before today, we didn't even discuss, but I was impressed by his presentation. How do you create now a sustainable hype? Let me quickly explain to you the difference between a, rate, a hype, a rage, and a trend. 
When you look at the SEPDET, social, economic, technology, ecologically, demographically, and politically, when these six movements are going on, you create trends. It's like the financial economic crisis, it has become a trend. It impacts all of these aspects. A rage, it's something that is not commercially done. I see it in the office, I see guys coming in with sleeves all over, I say, oh, what are you wearing? It's a tattoo, I say, okay, interesting. It's not commercially pushed. It's, it just pops up out of the ground. These are rages. And then you have hypes. For hypes, you pay people like me. And you pay people like me to invent something that we can sell to everybody. Now, important to understand is the tipping point. The tipping point is a moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a certain line and spreads like an epidemic. With Elon Musk visiting now Europe, I don't think that he paid the CIA to find out what happened to Volkswagen. But anyway, these are tipping points that change the world. We built it, for example, the brand Elisa in Tunisia, and I saw it before the Arab Spring started. The guy who put himself on fire was wearing a T-shirt we designed. Quite interesting. Tipping points, you cannot control them anymore, but you can control communities. The tipping point, it's simple. It's a law of the few. It's a stickiness factor and it's the power of context. You need these three things. Now, we can hype a questionable product. That's what we used to do in our business for a little while, but you'll never build an enduring business. I think that's what also the message Hunter was bringing. I think that's also the philosophy behind Tesla, at least I hope. Now, sustainability is a requirement. It's not a differentiator anymore. Very often, clients, they say, Eric, you know, uh, uh, my hair is a little bit stuck here somewhere. Uh, Eric, you know, we want something sustainable, you know, see how sustainable this is. I said, guys, this is not a differentiator anymore. This has become the standard. Oh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, this has become the standard. But only when sustainability is being constantly improved, then it becomes added value. And sustainability, it does not mean ecological stuff. It can also be about inclusion. What I find amazing is I, I was the other day in the Netherlands yesterday in Amsterdam and I was with a client and they have this guy who only has 20% of his site and he runs their online sales of a couple of hundreds of million euros. He has these huge screens as big as this to be able to read it. That is also a way of sustainability. It's not only about ecologically, it becomes hidden people. What I want you to guys to take with you, the tipping point is the birth of a rage, a hype or a trend. Be there, grab it. Either you can create the hype or anticipate on it. I think when Hunter and we stay in the same examples, it's always easy, it's like teaching. When you look at Ecover, at that time, there was like something happening underneath. Yeah? There is one of my other clients sitting here, Philippe van der Moort, I don't know where he's sitting, the guy who invented Alpro, yeah, when nobody believed in it. Philippe, where are you sitting? There is uh, Philippe van der Moort, the old guy there. He's a guy who created uh, Alpro. And he's now busy with creating something uh, really bizarre. If you really want to talk about it, go and find him. Because he's also seeing a rate that pops up. Sustainability requirement, not differentiator. Of course, constantly improved sustainability creates added value. Now recap, four important things. And you can go and check all of this out on SlideShare afterwards. Way to market, time to market, go to market, get to market. These are the only four things that are still important in marketing. All the rest, bezaak. Not important, I still have 30 seconds, so I'm perfectly on time. Last part, game over. And now I have 34 seconds left, so I can only tell you, guys, this book is going to be, you see the little subtitle, it says, this is it, we're all fucked at the end. This is the end of marketing. The book comes out in November, and where is Byron there? Let's send it for free to everybody as an e-book, as a little gift, and then you can all donate to the Grand Home Foundation, yeah? All right, 13 seconds, great, thanks Byron.